When Cunard announced their plans to build Queen Mary II, the first renditions of the ship showed a vessel with a large Cunard funnel of similar design to that found on board the older QE2. But fast forward to today, and it's pretty easy to see that QM2's funnel is much shorter than QE2's, and much shorter than the original renderings of the ship. So let's investigate why this is. But first, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Chris Frame. I'm a maritime history author and lecturer. I speak at maritime museums and onboard cruise ships around the world. I'm also the co-host of the Big Cruise podcast. I'll link it in the description. If you're interested in cruising, cruise ships, or maritime history, I think you're going to like it here. So hopefully you'll subscribe at the end of the video. To get an idea as to the design of QM2's funnel, we need to step back to 1987. The QM2's predecessor, QE2, had just finished a massive refit at the Lloyd Werft shipyard in Bremerhaven. Here, the ship's original thin but tall funnel had been rebuilt to accommodate additional engine exhausts, and the result was a truly massive structure. QE2's original funnel was the first among the Cunard fleet to incorporate the distinctive design that we know and love today, with the black smokestack, the red cowling, and the white scoop designed to direct air up and over the structure and push the smoke and soot away from the aft decks. When the structure was rebuilt in 1987, the same basic design was maintained. It had, after all, been a highly effective design, but the 1987 variant was supersized to make it thick enough to accommodate an array of exhaust and heat exchangers for the nine brand new diesel engines. QE2's funnel was so large that it overhung the top deck of the ship and completely changed QE2's appearance. But it was bold and powerful looking and made QE2 even more recognisable. So it's no surprise that when Carnival announced their plans to build the first true ocean liner in a generation, a big, tall, thick QE2 style funnel was included in the original artist renditions. But why did this plan change? Well, the ship that ultimately became QM2 is a very different liner to QE2. While QE2 was purposely built smaller than the previous Cunard Queens to allow her to be efficient in cruising, QM2's design took a different approach. QM2 was the first ocean liner designed in a generation. As such, passenger expectations had changed. QM2 needed to be a larger ship to accommodate an extensive selection of balcony cabins. In addition, the ship would introduce new features, including a seagoing planetarium, double height decks, and a grand lobby, all adding height to the ship. Furthermore, the ship is powered by both diesel engines, stored deep within the hull, and gas turbines, which were positioned atop the vessel, adding extra height to her funnel casing area. This is actually what that big white box is with the lettering Queen Mary 2. The gas turbines are found inside this box. What resulted is the largest ocean liner yet built, with QM2 outstripping all other liners in length, width, height, and gross registered tonnage. But despite her size, QM2's purpose was to replace QE2 on the transatlantic run between England and America. And in America, the port she's expected to visit most is New York. At the entry to New York Harbour sits the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. All traffic entering the harbour needs to pass under this critical roadway. At high tide, the bridge has a clearance of 69 metres or 228 feet. And this posed a problem for QM2, as designers had to contend with an air draft limit of 62 metres or 203 feet from the waterline to the highest point of the ship. When those original renderings were drawn, the extra height for the gas turbine casing had yet to be included in the design. But with a like-for-like -like QE2 style funnel, the much taller QM2 would be unable to pass under the bridge, and this would make her primary purpose redundant. So designers shortened the funnel to allow QM2 a clearance of 3 metres or 9.8 feet at high water in the midpoint of the arch of the bridge. Something that is perfectly safe, but looks quite daunting from the top decks of the ship. I recall thinking how close it looked to the ship in 2019 when I sailed into New York Harbour for my first time on board QM2. As well as noticing how close QM2's funnel appeared to bridges in other ports, such as Hong Kong and San Francisco. So now we know why QM2's funnel is smaller than QE2's, and that it was shortened due to the clearance needed to pass under the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. But were there any other changes made to the design of the funnel? Well, the answer is yes. Remember that white wind scoop that I showed you on board QE2? 
Well, on board QM2, the smaller QE2 style wind scoop wouldn't be as effective at keeping the soot off the aft decks of the ship now that she had a shorter funnel. So the scoop was enlarged, making it extremely effective at pushing air up and over the shorter funnel, thus keeping the beautiful aft terrace decks clean for swimmers, sunbathers and onlookers. A huge thank you goes to Stephen Payne for providing some insight into the QM2's funnel for the creation of this video. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and please don't forget to subscribe for future maritime history or cruising content. Thanks once again for watching and until next time, I hope to see you on board.